Hi gang! As an addition to my video that takes you step by step through making a crystal radio, I thought I'd give you some troubleshooting tips and pointers, plus a little bit more about the capacitors. Hopefully you'll find this helpful if you're running into difficulties. A little tip I want to give here is this uh, antenna. I've actually got two antenna wires hooked up. Um, I've just hooked them up in parallel, like that. And that's good for uh, increasing your volume. You actually get uh, better reception if you have more than one antenna. Uh, it's actually kind of cool. Yeah, you add one antenna and you hear the volume a little more. Add another antenna, a little higher volume. Add another antenna and so on and so forth. Uh, that's good for if you're in a limited situation like I am in an apartment building or if you're in, say, a science fair hall or something. You don't have a lot of control. Uh, it is important. The longer the antenna, the better. Uh, like a four or five foot antenna won't be very good. So uh, me, I've got uh, 15 feet or so of wire per antenna. Works quite well. Just want to talk about the earpiece here. They're usually referred to as crystal earpieces or sometimes piezoelectric earpieces. They're far more sensitive than things like iPod buds, for example. So uh, those won't work for a crystal radio. You need uh, one of these. They're far more sensitive. In fact, they're so sensitive that if you take the two ends of the wires and just click them, tap them together, then you hear a clicking sound inside the earpiece. That's how sensitive they are. You can buy them online. There's a number of places you can get them. I'm going to show you another source uh, for a speaker that I found. Inside this crystal earpiece is a piezoelectric crystal. Well, this is a piezo buzzer right here, which I bought from Radio Shack. And it's normally used for making an annoying buzzing sound. So if you hook it up to a battery, it makes that sound. Um, so what you do is you simply take it, and hook it up to the same places that you hook up your uh, crystal earpiece. So this one's going to ground and this one's going to the other side of the diode. And it actually works. Here, I'll just give you a listen. Alternatively, this is a piezoelectric crystal that I got from a gift card. It's right inside here. And I was going to uh, try to demonstrate it using this, but unfortunately I ruined it when I soldered, so uh, I'm not sure if it's still good or not. But anyway, one idea is to get a piezoelectric crystal from a gift card and form kind of a cone or something so that you can channel the sound to your ear because it's very quiet. That, that should work, I think. I want to talk a bit about the diode right here. just want to make sure that you get germanium diodes, not silicon diodes. The silicon diodes don't work very well. You want germanium diodes. I didn't stress that in the first video. Another thing that's very important is that all your connections be very good. You want bare wires connected to bare wires. That's why I stripped off the enamel off the uh, this wire right here. And you'll notice all the other wires are stripped on the ends too. That's, uh, that sounds pretty obvious to some people, but some people are new to electronics. Some people, this is their first electronics project. <laughs> So it may not be obvious. Make sure your wires are stripped and bare, no insulation on them uh, when you connect them together, and make sure they have a very strong, tight connections. Some uh, pointers about capacitors. Uh, you don't want to touch the metal parts of the capacitors while you're working the um, unit. Um, you want to be as far away from the metal as possible because your hands also have capacitance and they might even have charge. So you'll interfere with the electrical features. That's why when I'm working this, I keep my hand way over here. And sometimes I actually get better results when I put my hand touching the uh, tape, for example, um, that's overlapping the aluminum because then I actually do add a little capacitance to it. Um, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, but you can interfere with it. This next part may go over the heads of some people, but I just want to demonstrate some stuff about capacitance of the capacitors. I'm going to put this one on the, my meter on the capacitance setting and uh, hook up some leads to the ends of the um, probes, the meter probes, just to make it easier to work with. Okay, so what I'm going to do is measure the capacitor, the capacitance. I'm just going to zero it out here first. And now I'm going to connect to the capacitor. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is pull it out all the way. That tells me that my capacitance here is 0 0.006 nanofarads, which is about 6 picofarads, which, you know, it's pretty much all the way out, so that's expected. Now let's see what the 
highest capacitance I get reasonably there is uh, 0.64 to whatever nanofarads. So about 640 picofarads. Now for my particular coils that I'm using here, the ones I've been showing you how to build, the range I should have is around 40 picofarads to 355 picofarads. So I'm well within that range. So that's why I know this capacitor is good for my coils. Um, and it's a good capacitor designed to demonstrate to people for me to show people how to make capacitors for crystal radios because, you know, provided you put this on fairly snugly, then it's going to work and I know that, so I'm happy. This is another capacitor I made a long time ago using plants from a book. Um, this is actually copper cladding and uh, this is the piece that you use to move in and out and tune it, the so-called rotor. And it's simply um, copper cladding. And this is another piece of copper cladding with a wire soldered to it. And there's another wire going from there to another piece of copper cladding underneath. And this piece goes between the two. And it works very well. I uh, decided to try to make one out of cardboard to see if I could uh, show an easy way to make these things. Using junk, basically. So I got two pieces of cardboard. I put aluminum foil, aluminum foil. And then on top of that, I put wax paper and wax paper for the insulation. The aluminum foil pieces are actually connected together. You can see right there, there's a bit of foil that connects them together. And then this also um, is connected to those pieces of aluminum foil so that you can connect to them from the outside. And uh, then this piece right here of cardboard has a piece of aluminum foil on it. And that simply goes between like that. The problem with this is it's uh, very variable. If you put too much pressure, then you increase capacitance a lot. Not enough pressure, you don't get much capacitance. And so uh, for demonstration purposes, it's actually not very good, not very reliable. One question that I got in my uh, other video about how to make a crystal radio was, what do I mean by earth ground? Or what do I mean by grounding? Are we actually talking about the earth ground? And the answer is yes, we are. What I've done here is I've got this wire. I went to a hardware store and bought a plug. And I connected this wire to this longest prong right here, because in North America this is the ground uh, prong, the other two are hot and neutral, so you don't want to touch those at all. Um, so I've really got a one wire plug here, and I just plug it into this extension cord. If I could get it. Anyway, and that goes off here, a messy desk, to right here. And it's simply plugged into the wall. Um, this run right here, this hole, is the ground connection. And that's actually connected physically in the backyard to earth ground, a pipe going down into the ground, a rod. Um, and that's for North America. All right, is this really ground or not? Well, in fact, of all my sockets in my apartment here, this is the only socket that has this connected to earth ground. All the other ones are not. And you can test that with a ground tester, which you can get from hardware stores. Or if you know how to do it with a meter, you can test it with a meter. It's a little dangerous to do though, so it's best if you get a ground plug, ground tester test if that's really good ground. That's one way of doing it. Another way is trying a radiator. My apartment has a very old you know, radiator, it's a very old building. And down here is a pipe which goes down, I don't know, somewhere. This one's full of paint, but if you scrape it off you'll find the copper underneath or some metal and you might, that might also be a good ground. In other words, this pipe might possibly extend into ground. In fact, in this building, it might extend into the foundation of the building, which is cement, and that probably is a fair enough ground there. And here's another possibility. If you have metal pipes underneath your sink, uh, possible that these go down to ground as well. Um, these, this one, I, I, I know for a fact that this one actually is buried in the cement concrete foundation of this building. Um, don't, don't connect to here or here or here because there might be Teflon tape or something, which is an insulator, where these are threaded on. It goes as far close as you can to the wall. That just goes right into the wall there. So connect the wire to that. And here's another possibility. This old chain link fence here. Those posts there are metal and they go into the ground. So uh, it's possible you can just connect to this somewhere, maybe connect to the post itself. Maybe scrape it and get a good connection. And uh, you get a ground that way. One change I want to show you here, I'm not sure if I'd call it a mistake that I made or um, or not because it actually worked. Um, but it's a good idea if the side that you're, of the capacitor that your hand is going to be touching is connected to ground. Um, so you'll notice I've changed the circuit here. I've taken the diode, which was over here, and moved it to here. 
and I've taken the ground connection and all its wires and so on, moved it from here over to here. That way I could connect this side of the capacitor, the side that your hand is near, to ground. And the other side is now connected to the other side of the diode. Um, that way when you are touching the capacitor with your hand, there's less chance of interfering with the capacitance of the capacitor that way. Um, so it's, in general that's the way you should do it. Although as you saw it worked uh, the other way, but if you, it was more finicky the other way. So this is a better way to do it. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar Org, where you'll find more crystal radio related videos. That includes the step-by-step -step instructional one on how to make the crystal radio you saw in this video. Another on making different type of coil with taps for crystal radios. A video on how to make a Rochelle salt piezoelectric crystal. And many, many more. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos. Or give a thumbs up. Or leave a question or comment below. Bye for now.